What's up? Welcome to the video. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. It's raining where I am right now, but that's okay. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about the most underrated tool in Affinity Photo and maybe even Affinity Designer. It's the it's a multi-purpose Swiss Army knife. It's got a it's <clears throat> it's the pen tool. It's the pen tool. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, and I'll show you in some examples here why it's underrated. So let's hop over to Affinity Photo and let's go over some examples. Let's go. Okay, so we're in Affinity Photo and we are going to use the pen tool to add something to this photo. Now, I don't know what this guy's doing in this photo. Maybe some maybe some last minute Christmas shopping on a very foggy night is would be my guess. And we all know we can use the pen tool to make lines, but you can also make shapes and then make a few changes to those shapes to make something really cool. So... Let's first grab our pen tool. So you can hit P on your keyboard or you can go over to your tools and on the left-hand side here and click on this icon here. And the only change that I make is I keep my pen mode at the very top in pen mode, but I also like to add this option over here, rubber band mode, because this allows me to see what my next line is going to look like. It's a bit, of a bit of a preview. So now that we have that, I'm going to zoom in on the picture here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to start drawing inside this flashlight where I think the light would start to come out. So I'm just going to draw, I'm making little points here with my pen. And I'm going to draw about a half circle out here, maybe two about here. I'm going to zoom out now. And then I'm going to finish where I think this beam would be going. So let's zoom out again here. And let's say it would go from maybe, let's say here, maybe over to here. And then I'll reattach that line right there. So now I have this shape created, um, but we don't see anything yet. We have to give it a color. So what I'm going to do is just grab my uh, color panel in the top right and give it a color. And I'm going to go kind of this white, white grayish sort of color, maybe like this. And now I have it drawn out. It doesn't really look very great. It doesn't look realistic. So let's make a few changes. First thing we're going to do is click on our shape here in the layers panel. So this curve right here, and I can rename this. Let's call it light just so we know what it is. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the blend mode. And if you don't know about blend modes, essentially it's how two or three or four, however many pictures you have interact with each other. So by changing the blend mode, we're get these two pictures are going to interact with each other. So I'm going to go up to my blend modes at the top of my layers panel here and click on that. And I'm going to change it from normal to something like overlay or soft light. If you go through them, you'll see what it's going to look like on the photo as they're sort of uh, interacting with each other. So this is overlay, and I like overlay because you can still see the smoke or the fog there, which you would in a real light. Uh, I think I'm going to pick soft light for mine. So I'm going to click soft light, and you can see now it looks a little bit better because there's a bit of transparency. It looks like a beam of light, but it's a bit too sharp. It doesn't really look realistic because um, it's too perfect. So let's add one more thing. Let's click on the light layer on our layers panel here. And this time I'm going to go down to the effects right here at the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to add is a Gaussian or a Gaussian blur. I'm going to click on that. I'm just going to drag this slider up a little bit here. And you'll see as I drag it up, it's going to get a bit more blurry. And if I go all the way, it's pretty blurry. Uh, I'm going to bring it somewhat down a little bit. So it still has a bit of shape, but it's still blurry. So let's put it about there. And this can always be changed later. Everything's non-destructive, so we can always change it. And now if we check that off, now we have this beam of light coming off his gun. And it looks a little bit more realistic. It's interacting with the background. It's not so sharp. And it's, that was made just using the pen tool and making a couple changes. We changed the blend mode from normal to soft light, and we added a bit of a blur um, just to make it look a bit realistic. So that is our first example. Okay, so next example of why the pen tool is so awesome is text on a curve. Now, you can use your pen to draw any kind of line or any kind of shape, and you can have your text follow that path. In this example here, I have kind of this windy road, and I'm going to use my pen tool to follow along the road and then add text so it sort of looks like it's flowing with the road. So let's zoom in for a second here. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab my pen tool by hitting P on my keyboard or selecting this icon right here in my tools. And again, the only thing I have changed at the top is I have pen mode selected, but I also have rubber band mode selected so I can see my next line. So I'm going to start to say maybe about here. And I'm just going to draw around the road here where I think it looks about right. Let's draw a couple points to about, let's say, there. And now you'll see in my layers panel, I have a curve that's been created, which is my line. And if I zoom in here, I've got my line kind of right here, and it's not perfect on the road, but that's okay. And now I'm going to grab my text tool. I'm going to go over to my tools. I'm going to click on my artistic text tool, which is right here. And you'll see my mouse now has changed to an A with a target. But when I get close to the line that I was drawing, which is down here, 
you'll see it's going to change. So as soon as I get close to the line, it changes to this T with a little squiggly line, which means uh, text on a curve. Again, if I move my mouse away, it changes back to regular text. If I get close to the line, it's going to give me that option. So if I click, now I have an option to start typing. So I'm going to say, uh, don't follow the leader. And I'll zoom out here so you can see this. So now my text is following along the path of this road because I drew my line out with my pen. And something to note here is when I click on this text, you'll see I have these, I have a red kind of triangle at the bottom and a green one uh, at the front. These are just start and stop points, so I can move this back and forth. Um, if I go too far, it's going to flip over. If I hit the red, it'll flip over this way, but I can move these sliders uh, depending on uh, how big the line actually is. So I'm going to zoom out here so you can see that again. So another reason, again, why this is so amazing, the pen tool is text on a curve. Again, you can draw out any shape, any line, and when you get close enough with the text tool, it'll give you the option to actually type text on a curve. Okay, so the last reason the pen tool is so amazing is precise selections. Now, in this particular case, I have a building and I want to remove the sky. But I can use my pen tool to do that. Now, this is a pretty easy example, but I just want to give you a quick idea of what it can be used for when the selection brush tool isn't going to work for you. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to bring my pen tool back up. And I'm just going to do a really quick selection of this building here. So I'm just going to click here and I'm just going to start going around. It's not going to be super precise, but that's okay. So let's just click around all the parts of this building and I'm going to go down and then go back to the original line to close up the shape. Now you'll notice when I do this in the top left corner, there's two options. There is mask and there's selection. Now I'm going to pick mask in this particular reason because I want to isolate it and get rid of the sky. So when I click on mask, you'll see the sky disappears and now the building looks as if it has been isolated. Now, if you look in the layers panel, you can see I have my mask down here. So it's actually non-destructive. If I start moving this around, you'll see the sky is still there. I haven't deleted it. It's just masked out. We've just hidden it for the time being. And the cool thing about this now to show you it's truly isolated is, is I can turn on this picture, which is down below it and replace the sky. So now the building has been totally isolated. Again, it's non-destructive if I wanted to bring it back. So another reason that the pen tool is so powerful is you can make precise selections. Again, when the selection brush tool may not be the tool for the job. Okay, now it's time for the comment of the week. Let's check it out. Am I glowing though you can't see me? Ridiculous nonsense. Try to manage your smartness. It's not serving the purpose. Okay, so that wasn't the nicest. Let's check this guy out. So he doesn't look very happy. He doesn't look like the happiest guy. So let's go ahead. Let's fix this guy's profile picture. First, we're going to make him smile, right? We're going to put him in a happy suit. I'm liking this already. It's looking fantastic, but we need something. We need some hair. Let's add some hair. Not bad. Nope. A beard. That's very modern, but let's I don't know. Let's flip, change it up. Let's invert the beard, put it on his head, make it his hair. That's good. Mm, change the eyebrows. We'll use his beard to make his eyebrows. That's looking smooth. Yeah, bigger hair, bigger presence. This guy's got a big personality. Give him, give him a little spikes on the side here and we'll just put a bird in his hair. Why not? And finally, you know what? Let's just put him on a romance novel. Try to manage your smartness, the grumpy bad boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please tap, tap, tap that like button. If you want to support the channel, join the community. I got links down below for um, all my favorite brushes and things I use. If you want to subscribe, go ahead and hit that button. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.